the costs of doing NEMT have been rising, right? Gas, you know, fuel prices have been increased, um, labor prices labor. have increased, but the reimbursement rates for doing trips. That that point that you just made is um, something that needs to be um, discussed, you know, on a on a national level, not just you know, what I'm saying regional or local. <laughs> It's quite exciting, you know, to reach out to, to people, meet new people. That, that's, that's the only reason why I really got into uh, this industry, because when I, I started off as a uh, a driver, I worked mm -hmm. for a company, you know, previously for two years for the first company and a year for from the uh, other company. And, you know, meeting people during the, you know, doing those those trips, you know, you can you get to get interesting stories, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and yeah. you, you meet great people. And then I guess for me, I have, you know, elders such as, you know, my aunties and uncles that have, you know, disabilities and things of that nature. And them having, you know, the the fact that sometimes they don't have, the way they did have transportation, but when it when when people around them don't have transportation, it's like, okay, what what, what, what is going to be done about that? particular um problem you know having to get being able to get these people to the appointments or just transportation period you know getting to pharmacy or whatever case yeah, so, yeah just getting them out of their house yeah yes yes yeah. yo but you know on on your point about interesting stories so one of my customers i was talking with her the other day um she's saying that she she's going to start a podcast with one of her passengers every time you know she takes this guy to you know appointments like three times a week and she's like this guy he's, he's an old guy he has so many interesting stories that he tells me every car ride i was like i should be recording this as podcast episodes you know that is a genius idea you know that 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 would that would be that that would make some great great content because you know when you i i can say from my personal experience you know, having the opportunity to speak to these people and that, you know, they tell you about their lives, their families, and you know what I'm saying, different things that go on. You know, you you find out, you know, different things about people and, and, and different cultures and you know what I'm saying, different sectors of, of uh the state. Like I'm I'm in the Detroit area. So, you know, if we, if we go if I go west toward like Ann Arbor, uh where University of Michigan and all that is, you know, there's there's, there's different uh, there's different ways that people uh, I guess interact with you know saying with people. So I learned a lot within these last since 2016 as far as this industry goes. So I'm very grateful. Reason being, I um, able to you know share this information because I, like I said, I wouldn't have been able to. I was into real estate before, so you know this was coming into the I guess transportation industry is something totally different than what I'm. Uh, I'm used to, and I really like what I do at, at this at this point in time. So it's like giving back, you know, what I what I could say, and then yeah. I can get paid. I can get paid for it. So <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah, yeah. Why, why did you um? Why did you make the shift from real estate to transportation? No, so well, I'm, we still have rental properties. I still, you know. Oh, you still do that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Me and my wife, we still have a you know portfolio. You know, we have you know like six. Uh, properties in Detroit and we have two in Wayne. So it's like, you know, the transportation industry, like I said, um, is something different. So my backstory, uh, just, uh, I guess, if you yeah. know, I was familiar with uh, my, my channel. Um, 2013, I ended up going to, uh, to prison. So I had, a, I had a stint where, you know, things wasn't so great. So I ended up going to prison for two years. And when I came out, you know, basically nobody wanted to hire, you know, anybody, you know, they would hire me, but they wouldn't give me the opportunity to make a, so a, a decent living to provide for my family. I still had kids and things of that nature. And just so happened that my uh, best friend's sister, you know, she uh, introduced me to a guy named Mo who owned a, for his father owned a uh, transportation company uh, in Dearborn, Michigan. So they gave me an opportunity to, you know, drive transportation. And then from there, you know, at, at that point, I was just working to earn a living, 
but then I said, like I said, I started meeting new people. And that's my thing. I like to, if anything, anybody know anything about me, I like, you know, conversating with people and just getting to know people's story, you know, so they can understand my story. So mind you, uh, 2013 was a, it was kind of a awakening for me as well, because 2012, um, we had a house fire, my uh, end up our home burned down. We were living out of the hotel for like, I think four months. Oh. Uh, and so me, yeah, me personally, I had to figure out how I was gonna provide for them. So we ended up getting a house, you know, we got a house and everything, but um, a month and two living in that house, I found out I had cancer. Okay, so this is in, in May. So May 6th, um, 2013, found out I had uh, cancer. May 7th, 2013, they had to have emergency surgery to get the tumor removed. Okay, so fast forward maybe uh, two months in July. Um, like I said, I was still trying to figure out, you know, how to provide for the family. So made the wrong decisions and ended up getting sent to prison in July. Came home in 2015, worked at Denny's uh, for about maybe a year. And then I'm like, you know, this, this really ain't cutting it. So, um, like I said, my best friend's sister ended up, you know, saying, hey, look, why don't you uh, come over here? Because she worked at the company. And she said, I, I talked to um, the owner, see if he can get you, get you a job. And from there, I you know, ended up, you know, taking that position at um, the transportation company and ended up liking it. You know, I didn't think I would like it because I'm not really a driver. I don't, I didn't think I liked driving that much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But. Yeah. It, it ended up being that way where I was, you know, I I enjoyed it. And like I said, I like talking to people. So, and so that 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 made me spark my interest. Um, I would say maybe about a about a year and a half into working for that company, then I just I was just inquiring, like you know, what I'm saying, how did how did you how did he end up starting the company? And he just blew me off, you know. He didn't think I was serious, but I was really serious because um, I know they made some good money. And they, he was always talking about they, they got to process their Medicaid payments and you know things of that nature. Didn't know what that meant. You know what I'm saying? One day, fast forward, uh, one day I was just sticking around at the office uh, because we were waiting on our checks and everybody had left, um, meaning the uh, other employees. And so I just stuck around. He wanted me to answer the phone, you know, because it was just me and him in the office. I answered the phone. So I was doing um, billing for him. You know, we, I, he was having me do a few different things. And I'm like, wow, OK, this seems like it's very profitable. Huh. Let me ask, ask him again. Ask him again. He was like, OK, well, this is what, this is what you do. You, you, uh, you got to get your EIN number. You have to um, you have to uh, get your business set up. Um, and he just started running everything down. And I was, I was very curious, told my wife at the time, of course, she's my wife, still my wife, but at the time I told her about it and she was like, well, we don't have no uh, vans or nothing. I'm like, well, the vehicle that we have right now, that I was, I was driving personally um, at that particular time, it was a uh, Toyota Camry. So I was transporting people, but we switched cars. He had maybe like 22 cars, 22 vehicles. So we had switched. You know, it depends on if you're doing a uh, wheelchair or, you know, um, ambulatory. And, you know, sometimes I drive the regular car and then next time I might drive the uh, wheelchair vehicle. So he told me you can start with your personal vehicle. And that is what, you know, caught my attention. You know, if, if I can just start with this vehicle that I have, then maybe I can just get into the door. If I get into the door, then I can take it from there. Yeah. I worked for another company because uh, he ended up slowing down, but I still had bills. So I went to another company for another year. Um, named a guy named Harry. I mean, that's a great transportation company. And then from there, all right, in 2019, I said, okay, well, I'm going to take a leap of faith, you know, and I'm, I'm going to try to do this on my own. And me and my wife did it with a 2006 Ford Taurus. You know, it was the first, first vehicle. And, uh, I can say right now it's been uh, the best thing that happened so far. <laughs> Is that vehicle? Yeah, yeah, the, the 2006, that, that, was the, that, that was the start, the 2006 Ford Taurus. And how, w which year did you get that? The, the, the vehicle? Yeah. No, we already had the vehicle. 
I just end up I just end up using it for uh, the business, uh, just transferred into my uh, business name, and we uh, started with that vehicle uh, to start the business, doing ambulatory. So, which which year did you start your business? Because you started driving for your friend's business in 2016. 2019. 2019. Okay. Right before COVID. Right before COVID. Or what I would I say literally right before it was right before, yes. Yes. So it's been like four um, and a half years then. Four and a, yeah. We're coming upon yeah, it'd be four and a half years. And how many how many trips do you do a day now? How many vehicles do you run? So vehicles we had we have nine. So we run seven. So trips per day. If you're talking about a totality of all the vehicles, yeah, it could be real. I would say about I should bring my wife in here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I would say it, it roughly around sixty uh, trips. Um, Very nice. Yeah. So you just grew the business organically over these past four and a half years. Yeah, because uh, what we uh, let me let me back up because. The guy, the, the second company that I uh, worked for, Harry, he ended up giving me uh, one of his contracts. So I started off with one contract. I could, I can't say I started off with a contract. So it was good um, student transportation. So we student uh, transportation. Say it again. The contract was for student transportation. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so we uh, ended up grabbing that contract and he, Basically, gave me the blueprint on how to get into the school districts, and so now you might as well say forty percent of our load is uh, student transportation, and then we also also do um, uh, dialysis. That's that's another main component of our business is dialysis patients. Yeah, i've been coming across more businesses that do um nemt and student i feel like student is becoming popular among people who do nemt reason being i i, I would say so too because so some some students have like half a days right so um we have students that excuse me students that uh you know start of the day starts at 17 and so they they get out at basically 12 20. Mm -hmm. usually the, so usually the school lets out about two i think it's 217 so they they do like majority of the day but they had a couple of students get out at 12 10 so you know that that's that makes the day a little bit uh, easier for a couple of our employees that are you know moms i'm saying we have two employees that are moms so they have students as well so it makes it a little bit easier for them to you know get, get into the district and to still have the rest of that day if they decide to you know take off and you know do their own thing right right and do you still drive yourself sometimes for your business or or no oh yeah i'm, I'm still in the, i'm still in the field <laughs> okay okay yeah I'm still in the field. not uh not not as much but yeah because when i was working before it was like getting up at 6 a.m well 5 45 and not getting home until like nine so all of them grueling days are over with you know but you know yeah, I'm still out here. Yes. Yeah. And you said I when you, you know, you messaged me the other day, you said it's a family run business. So you got your I have well, my wife is you know doing the books, and then we also have um uh, my cousin. Yeah, he's um he's fairly new. We've only been there been there a year. And we also have um my auntie and then just some of their um distant relatives as well meaning it's like a third or fourth cousin to me okay wow <laughs> extended family business yes yeah yeah, yeah that, that's, that's basically what you could say yeah extended family business. and now your son is helping with the editing of your videos too <laughs> to do this to do this side of the education side where you we can drop the information and, and be able to you know at least stay uh abreast and you know keep uh pushing information out to you know let people know because what what i found out is uh that um 
not too many people know about the industry. It's like it has its, it has its it's like its own niche. And um, when I first started, I didn't I didn't know it even existed. You know, back yeah. in 2016, I didn't know that it existed. I didn't know what this was. Mind you, I did see the vehicles all throughout the city. Like I, I see these vehicles all the time, but it doesn't say NEMT. You right. know, majority of the vehicles don't say NEMT. The majority of vehicles just say transportation. So yeah. private transportation is what I basically considered it was. But that wasn't the case. You know, this this is a whole uh, industry, uh, which when I when I when I start. It's one of those industries where you either don't know it exists or you really know a lot about it. Or you, or you, yeah, exactly, exactly. That, that's what I can say. And so I was just messing around on, um, I think, it, yeah, TikTok and making, um, you know, little videos about that and uh, about the industry and things like that. And, you know, what I've come to find out, I guess this is when TikTok was pretty new too, as well. And, you know, people were, uh, inquiring about about the industry so that made me say okay well maybe this is uh a way to put out this information to and when, when did you introduce that? people to the industry say it one more time when did you start doing that putting out the tiktoks tiktoks would have been COVID. so that would have been you've been doing this for yeah that was years yeah, that would have been yeah, that would have been COVID twenty twenty one, I believe it was. Yeah, it was twenty twenty one. Okay. So, so it might have been out any uh -oh. videos for three years now. Yes. Yeah, it's probably been three years. Wow. Which is or it's been it's been very welcoming. I met I met some really dope people uh in, in the industry from different like uh you had MJ Reliable on here. Um uh, one of the I don't know if it was one of the beginning videos that you had. So, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I really like their uh, information that they put out. They're very, very knowledgeable. And you had them on too. Huh? You had them on your channel too. Yeah, absolutely. Also, um, Stephanie, you know. Uh, yeah, Stephanie Harmon. Stephanie Harmon, you know. I, also, I, I like Stephanie as well because she would, that's how, that's how I met, you know, those to a group of ladies on uh TikTok as well. So it's a it's a whole new community right here on on TikTok and you know then I decided to you know take the information over to YouTube because you know YouTube has a broad I ain't gonna say a broader uh audience but you know I guess diversifying the, the information on different platforms to help bring people in to educate them you know to about the industry which is you know my main thing just to give them the education side so they know what they're getting themselves into when first getting started yeah that was you know even though i had somebody to you know walk me through it you know if somebody wasn't in my shoes what what would be uh, the how, how would they get the information so i wanted to share you know from my aspect of yeah. you know how i got into it and you were i mean really like the first person out there putting out educational videos about NEMT. Um, I mean, I, you tell me, but like when you started, I don't think there was anyone else doing it, right? I don't know if they were, if they were or not. I didn't, I didn't see it. Um, as far as you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't see it in, in that aspect. But that don't mean that it wasn't out there. I just, right. I think it didn't come across my page. Uh, yeah, because I'm like, I'm a social media guy, but at not at the same time, not you know as. Uh, I got what you call an influencer. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that, that so when I did decide to do, you know start putting out the information, um, I don't think it was too many people out there. If there was, you know, it probably wasn't as uh, relevant. I mean, not relevant, but um, I guess known or one you know for everybody to see. Yeah. So you know, one thing I like about so on your channel, like you're very open with your videos, like. You know about like hey if you have something on your record that setback isn't a deal breaker you can still be an entrepreneur in this industry you can still live the american dream here's how you overcome that setback and you have multiple videos about that and i i just love that like hey you know what like yeah because i got like people I, who you know are like 
maybe down, but like there's a way for them to like should you know overcome that and like there's always no one else putting you know content out like that. Yeah, there's always an opportunity. Um, reason why I want to do that, I just want to let people know that you know even though um, you may have that that setback, you know you always are. We are in in America where you are, are a lot of you know a second chance and. Um, they have something called expungements where, you know, if you do have something on your, your criminal record, it can be expunged, you know, um, in, in certain cases. No, you know, you can't, you, each state is different, but there's certain things that you can get expunged. But, you know, if it's, if it's possible, then you should, you know, go ahead and do it to allow you to be, have the opportunity to break free and get into whatever industry, whether it's an EMT or, you know, whatever you plan on doing. You know, so that's why um, that's another reason why uh, and my kids, they always encourage me like that. You know, you have a story to tell. Like I just said, you know, there's there's certain things that I went through in, in my journey to get where I'm at now to that. It, it should, you know, help somebody else that may be, you know, going down the wrong path or on the right path or it fell off and want to get back on it. That is their opportunity out here. Yeah. You know? and. I mean, this is America. Being an entrepreneur is like, you know, the it, thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, I mean, don't don't I want to tell everybody out there, don't get it twisted now. Entrepreneurship is kind of it's kind of grueling now. It's just uh <laughs> as you know, Narav, yeah, you, you guys started this uh tech company, which is you know, it's pretty it's, it's pretty amazing. And from um what I've seen and what I've uh heard, um it's it's bar none. You know, it's it's top tier, you know. Um, you know, I'm familiar with Rao Genie, you know, Trip Spark and all the rest of those guys. Um, but what I can say is you guys are and I have a demo set up, you know, with you guys too coming up soon. Um oh, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just just so you know. Um who's that demo with? Uh I have to look at the uh, cause I uh I did it last night or the night before last oh that was you yeah so okay <laughs> because i got in uh, a message from dante and i was like huh i'm meeting with dante is it the same dante it must be <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so that that's that's me i wanted to uh i want to get a better understanding of the uh software like i said i've seen uh rave reviews like everybody is you know speaking really really highly of it and I, I want to know for myself so um, I, I can get out here and champion you guys because anytime new products come out, you know, or any new information, um, you know, I, I would like to share, it, you know, with the with the people. I have a little small audience, so I would like to, you know, you know, get that information to the people so they can go, you know, check you guys out, check whoever out. Oh, so, Dante, I don't think your audience is small. I see your videos and you get views, man. You get. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I really, I really do appreciate that. But like I said, I really, uh, like I, I, I follow quite a few, you know, EMT, EMT uh, you know, companies. There's, uh, you also had um, an EMT coach. Yeah. Charnese Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. I like her content. We have another guy down in, um, um north carolina uh motivational charles uh down in north, north carolina so there's some pretty amazing people out here that's you know putting some good content out here that's helping helping people so that's what i'm for i, I love i love the community you know it's it's a, a beautiful thing we have the uh uh nmt conference the mtac you know there's 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 so many oh, things gonna come this year i'm definitely gonna go this year Okay, nice. Yeah, I told the wife, yeah, well, we want to, uh, you know, head on down there. So, have you yeah. been to any of the previous ones? No, no, I didn't. I honestly, I didn't know they existed until uh, MJ Reliable, you know, had a video about it. You know, once I seen the video, I said, "Oh wow, this is this is amazing." You know, should have known that it was, it was things like that out here. Excuse me, but you know. You know, life be life, and then you know you, you get caught up in you know your own life, and you, you don't know what's all going on. So I, I try to stay in the in the loop now. You know yeah. that's why I had I started like a, a NEMT community 
where it's like a newsletter, but you know, it's a podcast and um and I just you produce articles and things like that on, on the private community, just you know, so people can have some more resources to, you know, come to uh if they need to need to have it. Yeah. And do you do you like um, you know, when you put out this content, people come to you, do they how much i mean i know you you coach people like one on one and you provide that too is that like a big chunk of your time is just like coaching new NEMT businesses on starting up well not really because i i i would say it's it, it, we do do it i'm not going to say it's a, it's, a, it's a lot but we do uh we do one on one coach uh, consultations to uh, to help people so mm -hmm. i give you uh uh I guess a scenario. So usually what we try to do, so usually I'm a, I'm a, in the office between uh, you know seven and we'll say five thirty, um, and then we we'll let let the drivers you know drive until at least seven seven p.m. if we have you know uh, patients at that at that time. So in the meantime, if I have uh, time, I start to try to block off time between like Wednesday through uh, Sunday where we can do consultation. And so, yeah, we have quite a, quite a few, um, cause people have questions. Now, mind you, there's this, there's a lot of information out here on, on, on the internet, you know, as far as like YouTube and things like that. But then, you know, what I come to find out is people who want to, they gotta have like that step-by-step, -step, which is understandable because they don't want to, you know, do anything wrong. Yeah. So I guess that's our job such as you and you know, other people that's in the industry to, you know, give them the guidance to be on the right path to get, you know, getting started. Because that, that main hump is um, sticking it all the way through because people get frustrated, you know, because this is not like you can get this done in 30 days. So, you know, I think that's one one misconception that people think that, you know, they might see a, a glamorous video and, you know, <laughs> hey, I can make this all this money, but, you know, you got to get, you gotta get in here and get your, get your feet wet. So, you know, and sometimes I be I get emails like oh, I just I just want to you know <laughs> I want to pull my hair out just let it go like I'm working with a I'm working with a family down in um Philly uh, Pennsylvania and you know she's having you know frustrations because you know can't get to the authorities to find out what's going on with her you know paperwork so it's it's giving them that motivation, let them know, stick it on through. Cause when you, when you get to the other side, it's going to be rewarding for you. Yeah. Not just, not, well, not just financially, but you, you'll have your own, your, your own business and you'll be able to do what you set it out to do. So I like, I like, I like teaching, you know, it's, 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 it's rewarding because, you know, I'm going to do my part and give, give, give it back, you know, cause I'm glad that I got that opportunity. Like I, like I said, 2015 was kind of trying for me and my family. You know, like I said, coming out, coming out of prison, and you know, not having working at Denny's. I remember nine twenty-five an hour. Which, that, that, that's not, that's not nothing. You know. Yeah. So, I like your story, man. I really like your story. I, I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. You know, that I, the reason why, like, like, I don't think I, I, I I'll ever stop. You know, sharing, sharing the information because. You know, eventually, hopefully, this this I got a <laughs> a quick story. I got a I got a uh, a comment one day on my uh, I think on my one of my YouTube videos where somebody was getting frustrated, saying uh, I shouldn't share. You know, I shouldn't be telling people how to get into the industry because it's gonna get oversaturated, like the trucking industry. You know, and so so mind you. Uh, you know, I, I didn't I didn't respond to the video, you know, because I, I that's that's your feelings. I understand, you know, because I understand some some industries get oversaturated and then they might, you know, do whatever. Uh, but Jasmine uh, from uh, MJ, she she slid up on the comments like, hey, look, you know, there's, there's enough for us all in this bigger industry. You know, we can, you know, it, it's, it's plenty of for, for all of us. So that, that that just let me know, like, hey, look, it's 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 enough information, you know, uh, <laughs> clients and stuff out here and sharing information won't hurt, you know, the next, next person, you know, yeah. don't, don't be a, uh, what they call gatekeepers. It's the information is the information, you know, 
I don't know about you, but I, you know, you've talked with so many NEMT business across the country. So have I. I've talked with hundreds and hundreds. I think this industry needs more like quality providers, like by a lot. Like the demand is shooting up, and the supply of good NEMT providers isn't matching up to how much demand there is. I would second that motion. Uh, reason we we personally. Uh, when I first started, we contract, we end up picking up maybe three, uh, you know, clients based off of the, uh, I think it was like that, that Guardian. The Guardian ended up calling around trying to find another company because their their family member ended up got left at a uh, at an appointment. You know, it was like three hours later. Mind you, you. It was winter time. It was winter time, so they was to the point where, you know, they they were maybe like two hours away, and they couldn't, you know, get there in time. You know, what I'm saying before it, it got too late, doors were closed and all that. So I, I would say, you know, there, there, there's, there's companies that do things such as that nature, um, rude, you know, bad drivers. You know, it's it's. I ain't gonna say that the industry is. I think they should do a better um, quality of, uh, I guess, hiring or not not just hiring because it could be the the, the the owners or whatever the case may be. But I, I, I second your motion on that on that point because having quality quality um, provider providers and owners is 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 what uh, you know push this industry forward. Yeah. Honestly, it's it's a big part of the reason we started Bambi. So my co-founder Charles, his grandfather's wheelchair bound, and the NEMT company left him stranded in a facility for half a day. They just wouldn't come to pick him up. <laughs> so that, you know, that, we figured like, hey, something's wrong with the scheduling and dispatching of these vehicles that they didn't realize they left this old man stranded for a half a day exactly yeah that 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 is that is that, that that's mind-blowing if you sit here and just think about that you know they and, the, and then they're, they're older you know what i'm saying they're dealing with anxiety and you know whatever the case may be so that's that's very disheartening to, to hear you know what i'm saying these i would call them horror stories i actually was gonna um on my channel you know get, start doing uh like story time because you know some of the stories i've heard with some passengers that we that we we picked up is you know kind of kind of horrifying to, to to hear like can you, can you one, share a story you want one of the one of the cases is one of one of these companies i'm not going to throw them under the bus because i know i know that the company I, they like dearborn michigan that's like it's like one gas station where like i guess a lot of us fuel at right so you know we see them they see us or whatever you know but this particular company um one of the drivers was uh <laughs> since since they thought they were comfortable with the, the passenger they ended up smoking uh of what they call a blunt in, in in the vehicle which is you know what i'm saying uh, uh some weed you know yeah. and, they end up complaining to the the owner they end up fire firing the driver but you know what what did not much not gonna say that they were in the vehicle but when the passenger got into the vehicle they all they just all they smelled was you know marijuana smoke you know and they they were they they were just so disgusted so they end up leaving that company going i mean leaving that particular company going to another company but you know what i'm saying things of that nature that that be happening and then you used to be like oh, okay well what what would possess a person or what would possess a, I guess a, a company to hire somebody that you know would do something of that nature even though they can can control it but hey you know this is a uh, I would say that things like that is kind of kind of kind of really crazy to me you know I the the number one problem or one of the biggest problem I'd say every almost every single any empty company tells me it's hard to find drivers. I mean, the labor shortages, they're hitting, you know, every industry, NEMT is no exception. Right. And then I would, I would go to the, to the point where it's not just hiring drivers, 
quality drivers too you know uh somebody that that, that you really can because you can you can do the thing of like background checks and, and things of that nature but you know are you going to have that per person that's punctual professional you know going to be be able to uphold your your uh reputation for your company you know what i'm saying to to the utmost you know and i think so i think you know it's it's i don't want to say people are don't want to work but it's it seems like you know i don't know if, if people got a, a, a influx of money I, I need to figure out where, where it came from because uh we're not getting that <laughs> we're not getting that bold of the money that you know people that's uh not one willing to work because i know like i said the, the guy harry that i um worked for for a year you know it's, it's kind of hard for him to find you know quality drivers you know so either you know they come work for three days and they're supposed to be five and then like he said one time he had a uh, contract on a saturday and they didn't even show up so he had to get out of his bed and go you know as as owners as you know you know what i'm saying you got to pick up that yeah you got to pick that up you know so it, I, it's gonna get better but you know we have to you know find ways to find quality uh members in the organization you know I, the, it's hard you know because the way i understand it is you can only find more quality people if you can afford to pay them what they're worth and you can only pay them what they're worth if, if you are paid enough for trips what right. you know what needs to be paid to do trips but over the past several years and you've probably seen this because you've been in this industry since 2016 but the costs of doing NEMT have been rising right gas you know fuel prices have been increased um labor prices labor. have increased but the reimbursement rates for doing trips haven't increased as much as the costs have no and that, that's that's a problem it is it's to the point where it's like you want to know it is if if it's worth it. it's still going to be worth it because you're helping helping the community but it's you still have to have a sustainable business right you know you have to be able to have, to have revenue to to operate yeah. so that that point that you just made is um something that needs to be um discussed you know on a on a national level not just you know what i'm saying regional or local yeah, you know, we, need, we 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 should be able to uh, if 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 inflation comes, you know, and it affects all the rest of the country, it's going to affect the businesses as well. So we will, we we are going to have to be able to you know provide for our. Uh, so case in point, what if we wanted to give our employees, uh, you know, health insurance and things of that nature? Like, there's a lot of things that play into to this industry that that's on the back end that we need to ha have uh, considered. So I'm, I'm, I want to, I, I want to get out here more and see what we can do to, you know, make this a little, little bit better for, you know, us owners, so we can pass it down to, you know, our employees, our drivers, our providers. Yeah. I mean, the the problem stems from the top, really. So, I mean, there are things that you can do, right, as an EMT business owners, but um, I don't know. That's just my perspective from from what I see as as a whole, right? Like, there are going to be any empty businesses that that do better, but as a whole, right, right. they're not getting paid by whoever be the players at the top paying. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why my, my our business model is is basically private pay. Um, exactly you know that's the thing if you do private pay then you can afford yeah but so, yes yeah, so stay do things right but, our, but the but thing I, is I, I think you know a lot of business you know especially newer ones you know, it's work it's a lot of work to get private pay and a lot of people they they just they don't do that they don't do the work they they want to sign up with whoever's just going to give them trips easily yes yes you're, you're exactly right you know it's 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 not an easy road to get into these establishments and contract you know with them you have to um and so, so what i know what i learned also is not you know you can't just go in one time one two or three times and think it's, it's gonna you know work or you're gonna get a contract you have to be diligent um and and always you know find find yourself uh always willing to network and just just, just stay 
in direct communication with these uh these medical facilities or you know whoever you con want to contract with because like i said that private pay is yeah i mean it, it's, it's it's good when you when you get the contract but you know getting into a facility and contracting with them it's it's not as easy as uh, hopefully that people believe it's going to be you know yeah. it's great you know getting to get into a, a medical facility such as like we have one in uh lincoln park so i'm in the uh, what we call down river area there's trenton Southgate. Uh, Riverview, um, Taylor, Romulus, that's what, that's what we call the um, down river area. So those cities around there, that's what we primarily try to contract with. And what I learned is, you know, either there with one of the conglomerate, we have a, we basically have a uh, it's metro, metro, it's like a metro EMT, so they have like the big contracts with, with, with the with the hospitals and things like that, that nature. So it's kind of hard to get, get them out of the way or, you know what I'm saying, you to get in there to get a contract with them because they've been with themselves so long. But once they figure out you provide a great service, that's, that's basically how we, we uh, get good contracts because they know we provide excellent service, punctual, and, 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 the, and the staff that we have is, is pretty amazing, pretty dope. I can, I can say I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a roof of my... <laughs> <laughs> teams that they do pretty uh pretty good job you know self-confidence in your business i love it <laughs> <laughs> nice. so again so you guys you said you guys started you know uh bambi uh because can i hear it again yeah so my co-founder charles his grandfather is a wheelchair bound man and he was just left stranded in a facility for half a day. I guess the NEMT business either mixed up, you know, when they were supposed to pick him up from the facility or whatever. Um, so Charles, you know, he was obviously pretty upset that his grandfather, you know, had to go through that. And he figured like, hey, you know, like Charles is a software engineer. So he's like, maybe, you know, they're not using the right system to figure out their schedules and their dispatching. So he looked around all the softwares in the NEMT industry for dispatching and scheduling. And he came to me, he says, Nirav, they're all terrible. <laughs> they're all old, clunky, legacy, old solutions. Yeah, they, look, right, they were right. built in the 1990s and haven't been updated. Like, you know, if we just build something that's really easy to use and works really well, we can win over this entire industry. And it's a growing industry. So I was like, okay, man, like, I'm with you. Let's do it. And you know, we come from the world of building technology startups. We don't come from transportation or healthcare, but we know how to make good software that's easy to use for people who are not tech savvy. Right. So, so we can do it business owners. And um, you know, like here it is almost two years later, and we've got a team of 10 people. We recruited a team of like the best software engineers from Silicon Valley companies and we're onboarding a handful of customers every week at this point, and uh, we're just getting rave reviews from all of our customers. So our goal is within the next two years, we should win over everyone in this whole industry. That's what that's that's what it's looking like. No, no, no shade to the rest of the company. But from what, you know, as we say, oh, my end, the, the word on the streets is that's that's exactly where you guys are headed, you know, from from. Uh, from the uh, reviews that I have seen all over, you know, YouTube and um, places that I've seen you guys at. So, you know, I, I want to thank you guys for, you know, putting this out here for, you know, people like us, you know, to be able to use for functionality. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's great to hear, man. And hey, you know what? So I'm actually the one who responded to the request that you put on our website. I don't think I got you scheduled or oh, you don't okay um, I, don't yeah. have, I don't have my phones okay so what i need i i thought i clicked that it's a, it was a calendar right yeah yeah so i i sent it to you at 9 30 p.m last night or i guess you're in central time so it was 8 30 p.m did you schedule one i thought i clicked it up yeah I, I clicked it and it should have been for like 5 30 i believe it was 
See, I don't have my phone with me, so I can't I can't check. So I would I would okay. uh, I would have seen something come through. If, if not, then I'll uh if not, I will um once I get done, you know, getting off the call, I'll, I'll double check. If not, then I'll go, go right back in there and get, get it scheduled. Okay. I swear I did that last night, but uh, I'll double check. Well, hey man, if you want if you want the demo right now, I can do that for you. But <laughs> oh you can? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Here. <laughs> I got you, man. Okay. <laughs> Let me just pop it open. Well, this is this is pretty dope. You, yeah, you made you made this a uh, a beautiful experience. <laughs> and you so you said you've been in this for two years, right? Yeah. So we started the company two years ago, and uh, at that point, we were just still learning about the industry. Um, you know, talking with hundreds of any empty business owners and figuring out, hey, how should this thing work? You know, what are their needs? And then we started building it and we only released our software like um, closer to the end of last year. So our software has just been out in the market for like half a year now. And in the past few months, awareness is spreading and now right. we're getting so much inbound requests to our website, people wanting to, to sign up. Oh, that's amazing. That is uh, yeah. amazing. And it's good that you guys are on uh, YouTube and you know providing these these interviews to give people uh, understanding of how, how the industry works and you know people have different aspects of what you know lane they are in. Meaning, like some people are with brokers, some people are you know private pay. You know, yeah. that that gives you know people a, a great idea. And then you have the software to go in between uh, both of those uh, niches. So this this is like a you know a perfect scenario. Yeah, I mean, people who are new to this industry, you know, they they need a source that sort of gives them everything, the education, the tools, the resources. So, um, okay, I'm sharing my screen here. So you're you're seeing the the calendar here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is like a, it's a demo account so it's an example any empty business that's running uh six vehicles today so you see here charles is driving this wheelchair van called combo okay and then kelsey is driving little ambi okay um so the name of the vehicle is up here and the name of the driver is here and you can see that like charles is working from 6 a.m until 8 p.m right okay and so on and so forth so this is like you know everyone's schedule and on the left hand side we've got all of these trip requests that have come in and the goal is to get these trips onto the fleet's schedule so this trip for passenger sandhill crane i'm going to put him on mike for example right so now mike is going to be doing this trip and like normally you know you'd assign every trip individually but the cool thing or one of the cool things about bambi is i can select all of these trips and then you see this button down here that says run bambi run right i'm gonna click that and that's our magic button so our ai is running now and it's figuring out it's gonna take less than 30 seconds to figure out the solution of like how do we fit in the most number of trips onto the fleet schedule and it does that by minimizing the total distance driven by the fleet to complete as many trips as possible. So it's taking into account like the starting and drop off locations of every trip. It's taking into account traffic patterns, like historic traffic patterns in this area. Um, you know, what are the needs of this passenger? Bariatric, wheelchair, like what are the skills and the capacities of the driver and the vehicle? Everything. And it's coming up with a suggestion. So this is Bambi's suggestion. And as a dispatcher, I say, okay, I, I think this makes sense. I'm going to hit apply. And basically, you know, this saved me like hour or multiple hours of work that I would have you know, had to figure out the next case day schedule. These th three trips here, they were not assigned because either there isn't space or, you know, we don't have vehicles and drivers that are outfitted to do those trips you know, that have these requirements at the time, like these three are stretcher trips, right? We just don't have stretcher capacity at that time. Right. Um, 
Like for example, this trip is at 7.30, it's a stretcher. Our stretcher van doesn't start until a little later in the day, right? Like it starts at seven, but maybe they wouldn't have made it to the pickup by seven, 7.30. So it's taking into account, you know, really everything you would need and coming up with the schedule. The, the extra cool thing though, Dante, is that let's say I get, you know, more trips in and I, I put them into Bambi. I can click run Bambi run and it'll come up with a suggestion of shuffling around trips from one driver to another to try to fit in more trips. So like I could say, hey, let's move this trip for passenger Susie Beak from Ben over to Maximilian so that Ben can take this other trip. Um, and you're seeing most of these trips are blue, right? The purple ones are will calls, but this is just like some example day in the future, which is, you know, we just made it September 1st. Um, but if this was an actual day, you right. would see a line, a red line across the screen moving down as the time of the day went on. And the okay. colors in these okay. trips, they would change in real time based on the real time status of the trip. Because you've got the drivers out in the field using the Bambi driver app on their phone, tapping through the trips as the status is changing. And these trip boxes, their colors change, like, you know, based on what the status is. And the trip boxes will even expand if the trip is taking longer or contract. So it's basically a living, breathing view of your day in real time. And I mean, we do have the map view where you can see the vehicles moving around in real time doing the trips. But honestly, you real, really don't need that because you can see everything and what's going on by just looking at the screen and knowing what's happening with your entire fleet at once that's dope. so yeah. yeah i mean that's the main thing one other thing i'm going to share with you and i'm actually going to open up a different account to share with you you do a lot of private pay which is the way to go um so i'm going to show you something really cool we released uh recently for private pay um yeah, okay. I'm just opening up another demo account. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, I mean, the, the rest of Bambi is pretty straightforward, right? Like, you know, a place to add your trips, um, a place to sort of, here, I can show you, like, set the shifts for all of your drivers. Like, for example, you know, Ben is, you know, Billy is driving this vehicle called Robin Mobile. Um, you know, Charles is driving van 20 and so on and so forth. But um, one cool thing for private pay is, so you see how like, this is everyone in your NEMT business. You have your owners, which is you, you know, administrators, you got your dispatchers, um, the associates are the drivers. Right. You can also add a facility admin or, and a facility user. And so basically you would be giving a partial login to your Bambi account to like a nurse or someone at a facility. And then they would have access to add trips directly into your Bambi account. And then they can see those trips, but only the trips for their facility. And they can also see the map and see those trips happening in real time that are only for their facility. So yeah. this is like, it becomes a great marketing tool. Like, hey, facility, you have this easy to use thing. You don't have to call me on the phone for trips or check where's the driver. Like. You just log in here and it's seamless. Um, so some of our customers, you know, they, they do private pay work and they gave this to facilities. <laughs> the facilities stopped ordering to the other NEMT business. They just wanted to use the add a trip form and they sent too many trips to, <laughs> to our customers. Yeah, yeah. I was so, like, oh, we gotta get more vehicles. All right, so Narav, real, real quick. So yeah. our, so are you saying that the uh, medical medical facilities can go into this if they are um a a admin they can you know schedule their appointments uh for their their clients in there and we 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 receive it on our end on our back end exactly i mean so they'd be essentially in this account and they would see the same thing that you're seeing here except they would only see the map section right. the trip right. section and the add a trip form and they'll only see the trips that are for their facility. And on the map, they'll only see trips that are happening that are for their facility in real time. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that's really amazing. That that is that is. It's um, 
it's yeah. a big focus for our company in 2024 to even build more functionality around this because we found that this is such a popular thing um, and more people are asking, hey, can you make it, you know, customize it this way, add this way. So 2024 for us is all about making it so that any empty businesses who do private pay can do it as seamlessly and effectively as possible. That 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 eliminate a lot of wow. That will eliminate a lot of um, I would say uh, data entry for on our our end. Yeah, exactly. That's that's amazing. Any empty businesses want to get off the phone <laughs> as much as possible. Like my, yeah. my wife didn't. <laughs> I don't want to throw her under the bus, but she she do not like me on the phone a lot, you know. So this yeah. this, this is pretty dope. Yeah, I really like this. Yeah. The thing is with facilities, you know, like they hear, oh no, the, another tech thing. They don't want to do it, but then when they actually see it and they see how like simple and easy it is to just add a trip, put in the basic info, and save then it just takes off like really fast yeah because nobody would like 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 you know complicated software you know exactly some, some of these some of these things are i ain't gonna say so complicated you know but it, it really is if you're not don't have you know a, a background as far as you know dealing with these different day-to-day uh, -to -day -to, i guess data entry that yeah what you just showed me is like something that's uh wow it's real powerful Yep. Not 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 not, not just because I'm on your platform, just you know, the, the, the gas, you know, situation. This is this is really amazing. <laughs> you know, when we started the company nearly two years ago, we, we talked with so many NEMT businesses across the country and we were asking them, like, hey, how should it work? What are your requirements? This and that. The one consistent thing we heard from everyone is make the damn thing simple, simple and easy to use. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Simplicity, you know what I'm saying? That that wins the game all the time. You know, simplicity. Yep. You know, that that made that made, a teenager can run run that, you know, that basically. That's great. Yeah. Wow, I appreciate this. <laughs> you have me on board. <laughs> run, Bambi, run. <laughs> run, Bambi, run. <laughs> And so the the team is basically uh, everybody that's uh can you click the team that's that's basically all your employees yeah okay so this is like you know this is where you schedule hey who's driving which vehicle from what time and you know what days then accounts is like all of the all of your employees okay right? and then drivers is like hey of all your employees who's doing driving and you can make anyone a driver. Owner can be a driver, admin, dispatcher even, and of course, associates are drivers. And right. you know, you put in their skills, what are their capacities? Can they handle bariatric, stairs, stretcher, right. whatever they can do. Um, and then of course, their attendance, right, for the stretcher trips. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, fleet, place to manage your vehicles. And like, you know, what, what's the capacity of, of this vehicle? Can it do, uh, how many wheelchairs can it hold at one time? How many ambulatory, um, and so on and so forth. So that when you know our algorithms are running and the run Bambi run, it knows like, hey, I can't place um, an ambulatory trip or, or or a wheelchair trip onto a vehicle that only has ambulatory capacity, and so on and so forth. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. You know, it's. This is amazing. It's it's just meant to be very minimal, um, sort of a minimal view, the the basics, you know. Um, but anything you need, it's there. Like you know, it's it's powerful. Like you know, you you're doing dialysis. Okay, don't make a regular trip. Make a trip subscription, and they're going Monday. You know. Let's see, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay, cool. Right, do right. that and then start an end day, make a recurring trip. Um, so anything you need, it's there, but we're not cluttering up this view and making it complicated for people who just need to do the basics. That, that is what you just showed me is <laughs> yeah, the the uh the subscription. Wow, wow. 
Yeah. And like, you know, let's say you've got a lot of vehicles in your fleet, right? There's, there's ways to make it more manageable. You know, you want to scroll through everything. Here's all your vehicles and their schedules. Um, most any empty businesses don't have 25 vehicles like I'm showing right now on this screen. But if you did, you know, like here it is all in one view. This is amazing. I really, really appreciate you having me today. This, this, this has been a, a great experience for me. <laughs> Glad to hear it, man. Well, yeah, I think well, it never gets old. <laughs> I, I show up right? every week, and I just love hearing this. <laughs> so you say so you say you're going you're going to the conference this year? Yeah, yeah. So I was um, actually a speaker at the conference this past year, and um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a big booth this year, like a big premium booth for Bambi. Um, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I think it, it's really just a matter of awareness. Uh, at this point, people just got to be aware of Bambi, and once they see, like, oh yeah, that, 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 that's what I'm seeing. It. Once once they see, you know, saying the functionality of it, you know, and get, get like the demo you just presented right now, you know, everybody can see how seamlessly easy, you know, what I'm saying they can, you know, navigate through this. I'm, I'm I can have my my 16 year old daughter, you know, in, in admin right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was just interviewing one of our customers the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, like, I, I got busy, so I had my seventeen-year-old sister start doing dispatching. She picked it up like within like the first day, and she was doing it." All. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I could, I could see that. I could see that happening. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you. Oh, and um. Yeah, I guess since you're doing a lot of private pay, you would probably use the the billing functionality. Like you, you can generate invoices easily in Bambi, just pick the trips, put them on an invoice, and we integrated a credit card processor. So you could click pay invoice, have the credit card of the facility or the pastor, whoever's paying, stored in Bambi, and literally run their credit card through Bambi. So you don't even have to leave Bambi to do everything you need for, for billing and invoicing. Okay, that, yeah. that's 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 enough said. You know, you know how how um, for a person to have to go through like Stripe and you know all those all those those situations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys, you you guys, you knew exactly what you were doing. This this is uh, you know, like I said, this is amazing a platform that you have right here. And thank you for bringing me up, bringing a part of part of your 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 ecosystem. You know, sharing my sharing my story and and being able to uh, be a part of you know, what I'm saying using your software because this will make my our you know business a little, little more uh, easy functionality wise. You know, man, just, right back at you. I mean, thank you for for bringing me into your ecosystem too. I mean, because this is a uh, yeah, this is a game changer as far as you know software it goes like I, i've seen quite a few of them you know we, we yeah try, we, we try yeah, we, we've seen them. quite a few of them too <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah well run bambi run <laughs> run bambi run run bambi run so i guess we got uh our, our uh, demo so thank you yeah, yeah. And now I'll be talking to wifey and uh, figuring out, you know, how we can be a part of the team because basically you you won you, you won me, even though y'all know you weren't you know trying to sell me, but you know, thank you for sharing it with me because this the that just to make us, you know what I'm saying, functional a little bit smoother. I, I know on a day-to-day -day basis. So Yeah, that's yeah, the goal. We, we can turn turn these vehicles into like a twenty twenty-five uh weight. You know, here soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> yeah, we we we, we want to get um, uh, you know, um, want to get into the stretcher. You know, thinking about you know what we have to do to, you know, get that locked down. So we have a few things you know coming up, just figuring out you know how would it you know work as far as our business model go. So, you know. 
with you guys and your help is going it's going to help us out a lot you know i can see that now <laughs> and I, I can leave you know anybody with some last words uh if they when they get to see this interview how i uh on my TikToks, um when i began sharing this information so my grandmother used to tell me a few words you know before um the night was over with you know and i'm gonna leave it with your audience is she said that don't do what you can do today tomorrow it's tomorrow not promise so if you are thinking about you know getting into this nft industry there's plenty of you know people resources out here i would strongly uh, suggest people to um, do some do your, your own research your due diligence on what's to come how to get into the industry and you know surround yourself with uh good people and good information so don't do what you do can do today tomorrow do not procrastinate because you know this is a i i i'm, I'm very uh big on this industry because this industry basically transformed me and my family's lives it has been a, a, a blessing, you know, uh, to me and my family. Case in point why I like to, you know, preach or talk about this as much as I can, any opportunity I can. So I'll share that with you guys. Again, now Rob, thank you for having me. This has been a, uh, a great deal with you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Dante. And if I can just add on to what you said, for anyone who's actually looking for that information, the quality information they need to get started, go to the Homeschool Dad YouTube channel. <laughs> YouTube, TikTok, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Yeah, that's that's where we that's where we at. We uh we are uh we're building uh ho hopefully uh, a few years down the road it'll be you know enough videos we're sustained in the information even though the information gets updated all the time but we plan on continuously bringing you you know quality information about the industry and you know and hopefully in the rob as well you know continues to you know be on youtube I, I watch your videos as they come you know so i appreciate you know, all the dope interviews you have some amazing interviews with some pretty amazing people that's you know come on your platform so thank you you know for championing like I said, this industry because you know we don't get the uh, recognition as all the the bigger, um, I guess industries as far as transportation go. But you know we are making a stamp now, so you know this this is great. Yeah, Please. appreciate you being on, Dante. Thank you. I'm putting your I'm putting your um, channel information in the description of this video. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. I look forward to you know working with you in, in the future. So me and wife will be talking and I will be talking to you soon. <laughs> Good to hear, man. <laughs>